Welcome back. Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I am your host, Christopher Brown. In this episode, we've recently ventured to Saskatchewan for the 2024 Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association Conference in Regina. Amidst the networking, breakout sessions, and speeches from provincial party leaders, we engaged with local elected leaders hailing from across the province. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. We delve into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Saskatchewan. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews Featuring Village of Air Ronge Councillor Tabitha Burr. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But well, we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Tabitha, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Simple but overarching question I've got to mm -hmm. ask. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, I have lived in the community of Iranj, raised my family there. Uh, my son was three when we moved there, and we had our daughter while living there. And uh, I've always loved our community and what better way to help than to uh, be a part of it in a deeper way and and uh, make that a position on council. So, so you could have chosen uh, federal, you could have chosen provincial. Was there a draw to the municipal? Local is where I feel comfortable, <laughs> yes. Although I have been uh, learning how to move further out from local. Uh, through the process, most definitely. So over the last, uh, do you mind me asking when you first got elected? Is this oh, your first term? This is my first term. This yes. is your first term. So in the last four years, because we're heading into an election here soon, mm -hmm. the last four years, is it what you expected municipal life would be like? Not in the least. How no. so? Uh, well, to be honest, I came into it not knowing much at all about, uh, as, as far as, the members of my family go, I was the least political. Okay. And the political conversations that would happen would leave me feeling like I was hearing Greek. <laughs> so, so after four years, do you hear Greek or are you hearing a little bit of English now? <laughs> uh, definitely hearing a little bit of English now, and I think now my family might be hearing the Greek. So... <laughs> So what's, what was the biggest eye-opening experience for yourself? Because uh, we have listeners from across Canada uh, who listen to the show, who tune in, who look for the perspective because they might think one day, I'm going to put my name on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give a prospective candidate or even here in Saskatchewan to say, you know what, it may sound like Greek now, but it's mm. going to sound, it's going to get easier. What advice would you give somebody? Well, I, I would say... Uh, I guess if I'm thinking about the things that made me learn the most, that would be always listen. Um, my, the platform that I came into this with was what you focus on determines what you miss. And as I apply that to everything, including how I listen to people, uh, I, I don't have to agree with people, but I do have to hear them. And uh, sometimes when I hear them, I realize I've been wrong. Or I, I realize that this issue is much greater than I thought it was just talking about it around my kitchen table. And as I listen, my perspective broadens. And uh, so that focus changes. 
So I want to turn to the village as a whole now. Yes. And I, as I always do on this show, I'm going to preface this question by saying this. Mm -hmm. This is a conversation between the counselor and myself, not a motion of counsel, not a direction of counsel, not okay. a policy of counsel, <laughs> just your opinion. All right. So in your opinion, counselor, what do you believe is the biggest issue facing Aaron today as of us this conversation? That is a very good question. Um, well... One of the things I think that that we have we consistently struggle with is we are sandwiched uh, in a tri community. We are we have La Ronge to the north, and we have uh, the Lac La Ronge Indian Band all around. Yeah. Uh, we consider ourselves part of a tri community, and I think navigating that tri community relationship is probably the the largest challenge. And also it comes with the most reward when it's successful. So. so how do you as counselor work making sure, how do you as a counsel, just mm -hmm. one counsel, not as a counsel whole, because that's the follow-up question, mm -hmm. foster those relationships with those tri-counsel? Because mm -hmm. that's not something that I can just pick mm -hmm. and pick up and at every meeting and yeah. it has to be something yeah. that's continuously going so for yourself do you see yourself being a conduit to making sure that that tri-council relationship is always fostered and not just in meetings yes i uh um i guess i can i can name a couple of things that i do actively do while i'm sitting at the council table um i am always intentional um, again, listening to what is being said, and um, if if it challenges the tri-community relationship or has the potential to damage or um, put walls up, uh, I may not always do it effectively, but I do attempt to draw attention to it. Uh, so let's flip the question a little bit. Then. Okay. What, while every municipality has its challenges, yes. what's the thing that you are proud about your community, about your, the work that council is doing right now? Okay. Actually, that's an easy one. Um, we, uh, but it's not often asked, though. No, no, it's not. Um, and, and this falls very, very well into the conversation of, of tri-community relationship and even further to, to reconciliation. And I believe it starts at the beginning of our term um, where we, we began by speaking about our Heritage Park. Nobody knew why it was called Heritage Park. I don't know that we even still really know, but it's taken on new meaning uh, because we, I came into a council that was in the process of changing that park, um, trying trying to beautify it, trying to, as every municipality does, um, and an innocent comment was was put out on Facebook asking about does anybody know why it's called Heritage Park, and it created a conversation where we realized there was a lot of pain. Um, because of uh, the past and um, in this situation, a Métis settlement being asked to resettle elsewhere. Um, and it halted our activities. We, we then looked at our council in a different way and realized we also needed someone or some way to uh, be cognizant of truth and reconciliation. Uh, we became the first council, I, I believe even in at least Western Canada, um, to have a sitting elder on our council. Uh, other councils, um, it's, it's legislated th uh, that a youth participant can sit on council. They don't have any voting rights, but they have the option to they can make speeches to, to make speeches to to take part in the dialogue in the conversations around the table. We have an elder who does that, and he is from our community. Well, that's awesome. And um, that has revitalized 
how we do our business around the table. We have that voice that guides us beyond what we just think is right and what our constituents may want. It, it, it adds a depth to our decisions that I don't think would be there otherwise. First off, that is the first I've ever heard of that, and that is a fascinating idea. And I think more municipalities, if you're listening to this right now or watching this, do what Aaronge is doing. Um, so I want to talk about tourism because it's okay. my favorite subject. Uh -huh. I love talking about tourism because I think municipalities have a wealth of tourism experiences or things to do in your community. Mm -hmm. So for you, what is there to do in Iran, and why should people come visit? Okay, well, <laughs> I can start with Iran in general. Yep. We've got, um, we are really excited, uh, attached to that heritage park that I, I mentioned. Yep. We also have what we call Heritage Trail. Um, and in the process of everything, we discovered that it uh, began as a trap line but it, it borders the, um, our, the, the outskirts of, of La Ronde. It borders the river all the way to, um, to Big Stone Lake. Okay. And if anybody's familiar or wants to look at a map, Google a map. <laughs> uh, and I've heard it has yeah. the best mosquitoes in all of Saskatchewan and Bear Lake. <laughs> that night. No, it, 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 there, there are a few. There are a few. <laughs> but... Um, we have been so excited about the progress that has taken place on this trail. Um, it's, uh, we've, we've started a partnership um, with uh, TransCanada Trail, and they have been assisting us to make the first kilometer of it. It's not complete, but to make the, f the first kilometer of it accessible, fully accessible. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and, and the goal, I believe, will be to make as much of it as possible accessible. Uh, I wish our uh, councillor uh, Hardcastle was here because he has all the specs on it. Oh, but, um, I'll, I'll uh, reach out to him after yes, this. Yes, yes, but um, several kilometers of trail. So is there a spot in the community that you go to? Is there a spot after a stressful day of council meetings, after a long day of budget deliberations? <laughs> because we all know you do it. Is there a spot in the community you can go and just recenter yourself? Heritage Trail. Really? Actually, yes. I love going to Heritage Trail. Um, you know, any season, we it's it's um, all four seasons. A little mucky in some places, but <laughs> but that's been remedied this last year with uh, addition of a bunch of wood chips and and yeah. But no, it's just to get out in nature and and it is our we have such a beautiful quote unquote backyard where we are. But Heritage Trail really is a feature of that backyard. Yeah. So, million dollar question time. Okay. And I think every municipal leader knows how to answer this question, but okay. let's put it on the record. Oh, that's pressure. <laughs> In your opinion, mm -hmm. what makes Erange such a unique place to live, mm -hmm. to work, and to raise a family? Okay. Well, community. Uh, it, it is, it has, from day one, uh, when, when my husband and I came into the community to look it over, is this where we want to move? If so, what part of the, the community, and I'm thinking more in terms of tri-community, we were always drawn back to Air Ranj. It felt close. It, we, we saw families. Uh, it, it was safe. Uh, I never would have wanted to raise my kids anywhere else. They had the benefit of, of going to Gordon Denny Community School in Aronge through their elementary years. Uh, they learned Cree. They learned about the culture of the area. Uh, they have they are from the north. I grew up in southern Saskatchewan and to watch my kids wa grow up in the north and um, learn to love the north showed me how to love it even deeper. So, yeah. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. This has been mm -hmm. an honor and a pleasure to sit down with you. Well, and thank you very much for the opportunity.
We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA AGM in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. So if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.